Welcome back everyone to Meadow Green Homesteading. I'm so excited to show you all the progress that our organic garden has made. Over the past four weeks, there has been so much growth and we have started harvesting, preserving, and eating from our garden. So let me take you inside and show you. These sunflowers were planted the first week of May by my son, their velvet queen. And then I had planted some solar eclipse sunflowers right behind them. Next to these, we have zucchini that was also planted the first week in May. It has grown incredibly fast and has been very productive already. It's called the garden spineless. And I chose this one because of the spineless petioles or leaves and it makes for itch-free harvesting. Over here is the early prolific summer squash. It's an all-American selection winner. It's an heirloom, and we've started harvesting off of this already. Over here, we have the temptress sweet corn that was planted the first week in May. And as you can see, it's already forming cobs. I chose this variety because of its disease resistance and the fact that it would germinate in cooler soil so I could plant it earlier. Our peppers were direct sown, just like everything else in this garden, so they took a little bit to get growing. Um, then we had a storm last night, so we lost one of our cayenne peppers. The rest of them are doing okay. Um, they're just starting to form buds. So those are the cayenne. And then over here we have Anaheim peppers and some basil mixed in. Over here, we have a hybrid variety. It's called Pretty and Sweet. And then over here, we have the Cal Wonder bell peppers. Next, we have a jack-o'-lantern pumpkin that we planted and it's growing super fast. My son is really looking forward to growing his own pumpkin and being able to carve it. We also have watermelon that's taking over this row. It's a heirloom variety icebox melon that's called Sugar Baby. It's really easy to grow and it's a super sweet melon. On our cattle panel arches, we have cucumbers growing. They were planted underneath the snap peas that you saw in our last video. There's two different varieties of cucumber. One's a pickling cucumber called Max Pag. It's a hybrid variety that has excellent disease resistance and very high yields and does really well in the hot and humid climates. The other one is a slicing cucumber. It's an heirloom variety called Straight 8 with a very fitting name because it produces eight inch long straight fruit. On the other side of the cucumbers, we have green magic broccoli. I almost gave up on it, honestly. We had a pretty severe flea beetle infestation and um, I don't spray any chemicals or pesticides in this garden, but it was so severe that we did result in using diatomaceous earth and some neem oil. Organic gardening can be really challenging sometimes, but it's worth the effort if you really care about what your family is consuming. In this row, we planted Royal Burgundy bush beans and Provider bush beans. And I always forget just how many beans you can get from one plant. We've been picking every day and there's still so many more to be picked. In the other half of the row, we have okra. And this is our first time growing okra. Uh, we chose a Clemson Spineless because it's been popular heirloom variety for over 80 years. And these plants are about six weeks old and they were direct sown. They're doing pretty well. They already have buds on them. Our potatoes are just about ready to be harvested. Um, the foliage is dying back, so probably in about a week or two, we'll be able to harvest those. We planted two different varieties, a Kennebec White and a Reset. The onions are just about ready to be harvested also. Um, we're waiting for all the foliage to fall down. And we have two different varieties here. There's a Stutt Garter, which is um, supposed to be really great storage onion. And then a red variety, which is called Red Baron, which is great for cooking and also for storage. 
We've already harvested um, most of our carrots, the rainbow mix and the scarlet nanties. Um, those were about 10 weeks ago I planted and so we've been harvesting those. These ones I planted about six weeks ago and they're the Danvers carrots. This is my row and these are my zinnias. There's two different, there's supposed to be two different kinds of zinnias here. These ones are supposed to be different colors and these ones are supposed to be just red, but some, some orange zinnias got in there too. And this is my only thing that has a white, my only plant that has a white flower on it. Oh, there's a lot of pink too. And, um, this is my only marigold that I have open. There's other buds over here. They're all over the different ones. And, um, I have only two bean plants right here. And, yeah. Um, there is one bean, this one bean right here, I'll pick that. <laughs> and there is this one, we had one potato left over from those potatoes. So we, so I put one in my row. And these are my calendulas. They're just starting to open. So that's, that's exciting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there used to be peas right here, but they died. So I had to get rid of them. And these are my carrots. A lot of them. A lot of carrots. And at the end of my row, there is a few zinnias down here. Yeah, those are the ones you just planted. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a plan for this area that had peas? No, I, th I think I'll just put some other vegetables right there. Maybe some more beans. I think that would be good. Yeah. Maybe I could plant some strawberries. I don't know. Ooh. <laughs> if you have any ideas, maybe you could leave a comment and let us know. All right. So that's it. <laughs> we direct sowed these tomatoes really early on April 15th. Um, we used cloches out of plastic bottles, which act as a mini greenhouse to protect from frost. It's really fun to see such a tiny seed grow rapidly into these big, beautiful plants. Now, we don't eat a lot of fresh tomatoes, so we chose the Southern Ripe Tomato and the Invincible Tomato varieties because they're really great for preserving and canning. In the areas where the seeds didn't germinate, we filled in with a variety called the Early Girl. If you're interested in learning how to do the Florida Weave trellising, you can watch this video right here and see how we did that. In this last row of the garden is strawberries we planted from bare root back in March 2nd. It was the first thing we planted in this garden. And we have um, sure crop, early grow, and tribute. Two of those are dune bears and one's an ever bearing. They're doing really well. Um, it, we've had a lot of 100 degree days, so we have some leaf curl going on, but We've just been snipping off runners and buds. And of course, we eventually gave in. We couldn't resist, so we let one plant form fruit. And we enjoyed those a lot. Overall, I think everything has been doing really well. Um, the majority of things have started producing. We've been harvesting. We've been canning and freezing. We got a vacuum sealer, so we've been vacuum sealing, blanching, pickling, you name it, we've been doing it. And it's been a really busy time. There's a lot of work, but it's also so enjoyable. This is my dream garden. Um, 
we just really enjoy being up here with the birds and the beautiful Tennessee scenery. It's just really peaceful and nice. And I really enjoy all these wildflowers. This is my husband's idea and it's turned out pretty well. We see lots of pollinators and bees, hummingbird moths, anything that you can think of has come in and enjoyed these flowers also. So it's been really fun. Pretty soon we're gonna have a lot more to harvest with the corn and potatoes and onions. So that'll be a job. But as much as hard work as a garden like this is, it's also so fulfilling and rewarding when you sit down at the dinner table and you can say, hey, I grew this. I know that there's nothing in this except for food. Thanks for sticking around for our June garden tour. Please consider liking and subscribing. It would really mean a lot to us. Until next time. Please consider liking and subscribing it really mean a lot to us. Till next time. <laughs> and as you can see, it's already forming cobs. My hands were weird. I'm always doing weird at the end of the videos anyway. People are used to it.